Hey guys, it's John from Marco Learning, and you guys have been sending us all kinds of questions. We wanna take a few minutes to answer. So I'm gonna to go to our Instagram account and pull up some of the questions we've been getting. And the answer to that question is we don't know. We won't know until after the exams have been taken and they do all the calculations on the results. So don't worry so much about getting seven out of 10 on the AP US History rubric or four out of six on AP English language. Focus on just getting the points, that's what matters, and ignore the final result. We'll deal with that later. Just to review this, you are allowed to use any textbook, test prep book, study guide, class note, anything your teacher's given you, any piece of paper or any digital resource you want. You can Google uh, information and dig it out of the internet. You can find something on Wikipedia. You can watch YouTube videos. We're cautioning people away from wasting too much time online. Focus instead on the material in front of you. Now, one thing I will say, the College Board has made very clear, you cannot collaborate with other people. So if you type your question, your answer in Google Docs, you can't have seven people in that Google Doc with you. You can't be on a Zoom call with other people. So, so long as your work online or in print doesn't involve collaborating with other people, it's fair game for the exam. So let's say you are not setting your alarm on test day, you don't really have a plan, you sleep in and miss the exam, you can simply show up for the June date. You'll be automatically registered. If you have a technical problem, there's a special technical form for you to submit. So if you've opened the exam ticket, you're in the platform, but you don't submit your essay, you need to submit a technical form. If you're a no-show on test day, you just take the exam in June. But remember guys, after the June 1st through 5th makeup dates, there are no make updates. That's it. After June 5th, there are no more AP exams for 2020. So you want to make sure that you take advantage of that first testing opportunity if you can. So this is a little bit tricky, guys. If you open your exam ticket on one device, you cannot open that exam ticket on another device. So if you open the exam with your ticket on a desktop or laptop computer and you handwrite your responses, you need to use your phone, take photographs of your handwritten work, send them to your computer and upload from there. That's one of the risks of taking the exam that way. That's why I recommend if you plan to handwrite, you might wanna think about taking it on a tablet or on a phone. Stay in one device. You are allowed, by the way, to have two devices open, but you can only open the ticket on one device. So there's a little bit of confusion here. All AP exams can be taken on a laptop, desktop, tablet, or iPhone, or other smartphone with the exception of all the modern world language exams. So AP Spanish language, you have to take on an app. Same thing with French, Italian, Japanese. The exceptions are AP Spanish literature and AP Latin. Those can be taken on a computer. So basically there's two ways to take the exam. Most exams will be on any device you want on the normal platform, but all of the modern world language exams, you need to take on an app that you can download onto a tablet or smartphone. The answer to your question about whether or not you're gonna automatically get exam accommodations is basically yes. If you were granted extended time, for example, before the deadline in March, that should automatically be applied to your ticket. But you definitely wanna check with your AP coordinator because accommodations are more than just extended time. If you have a learning difference or disability that has some other accommodation, you wanna make sure that that's in place, check the College Board's website and speak to your AP teacher and AP coordinator. This gets back to a really important issue. You wanna keep it simple. We know that there is no annotation tool inside the College Board's platform. So some people are coming up with a scheme where they screen grab the image of the file that they have to read and then they write on it and then they try to send that over. I think you wanna keep it simple. We know you can print the actual free response questions if you have a printer available. Um, and we know that you can uh, keep notes in a separate document and that might be the best way through this is to just simplify everything. Don't try to add in fancy annotation tools or download third-party things. You're just adding more risk and more possibility you're gonna have a tech problem or meltdown on test day. 
you can print, um, but I'm really nervous about printing. My printer runs out of ink, it runs out of paper, paper gets jammed, somebody put cardstock inside that I have to take out, or photo paper, or something weird, and that just adds the potential for risk. So really think about the benefits uh, and the risks of printing during the exam, and whether, for example, your phone is already set up to do this. This is something you definitely wanna practice inside of the official AP exam demo from the College Board. This is a really good question. Can you straight up Google during AP exams? And the answer is yes. You can go to Wikipedia. You can go to any web page you want. You just can't go to collaborative web pages. Oh, I accidentally stumbled on a message board where everyone's talking about the content of the exam. Or whoops, I took a left turn and here I am in a Google doc with 30 of my friends or a Zoom meeting. How did that happen? All of that is cheating, but what's not cheating is using any print or digital books and notes that you have in front of you. Just remember guys, every minute you're spending inside those notes is a minute you're not spending inside the exam platform producing answers that are gonna get you points. So be careful with the open book, open note format. Definitely always stay in touch with your AP coordinator and your AP teacher about this, but you can get a refund on this exam at any time, except once you've already opened the exam and taken it, the refund is over. But basically, if you wanted to cancel today, you could. Um, and we've been telling at Marco Learning, we've been telling people don't decide yet. This was back in March and April. Now that you're in May, it is a really good opportunity for you to see whether or not you actually want to follow through with the exam. Um, remember, if you don't show up for the exam in May, between May 11th and May 22nd, you'll be automatically put into the June 1st through June 5th exam. But if you do open that ticket, you're buying the exam. So a couple things. Remember, during the exam, you're not gonna have a tech support number to call. This is why preparation's key. Set up your space, charge your device, refresh your computer, go through the demo. Really try to get ahead of these problems, and they're gonna give you a form on the College Board's website that you can fill out to request permission to take the exam again in June if you have a technical problem, or even if you have an interruption. A screaming little sibling banging on the door can count. You just have to report that to the College Board, and then they'll approve you to go into the June 1st through June 5th makeups. Maybe. Um, it depends on the exam and it depends on you. Multiple choice is kind of interesting, right? Because you can eliminate some wrong answers and you have a shot of guessing it right. You can't guess things right that you don't know on, on the free response. At the same time, on the multiple choice questions, there's only one correct answer. On free response essays, you can kind of steer it around what you know and try to put out your best information, the best essay or free response result you can get. So it really depends on the exam, it depends on you. I can tell you the exams are not gonna be a joke um, and that's why it's really important to go in well rested, prepared, and take as many practice exams as you can before test day. The short answer is, you're gonna be unproctored in this exam. There are, in a sense, more opportunities to cheat. But just remember a few important points. Uh, your teachers are gonna to get to look at all of your free responses by May 26th, I think. They're also going to, the College Board has the right to notify your high school, notify other colleges you're applying to, they have the right to cancel your SAT or SAT subject test results. They also have the right to involve law enforcement. So I'd be very careful about cheating on an exam that's so short. Every minute you're spending trying to collaborate with other people online is a minute you're not spending in the exam earning points. So cheating for me is not worth it. It's not the way to play the game. Go through this in the most straightforward way. Do your own test. Thank you for sending in such great questions. If I didn't answer your question, put it in the comments and we'll answer it for you. Good luck on test day.